Hi everybody, I'm Mike Hanghold. Well, it's taken almost two generations, but after years of deficits and economic stimulus, inflation is now on a tear. It's chalking up its biggest gains in 40 years. And with Russia's war on Ukraine apparently far from over, the shortages of wheat and oil that come from that part of the world, well, they continue to put pressure on global food and energy inflation and as we're talking about global forces, the Chinese COVID shutdowns, which have been renewed recently, are slowing shipments of products uh, uh, that are manufactured there. All of this exacerbates supply chain bottlenecks while consumer demand continues to rage. And of course, that is the classic definition of inflation is too much money chasing too few goods. The latest CPI report, which is on the screen now, uh, shows that costs are hitting consumers pretty hard. Uh, they're up 8.5% over the last year. You can see from the chart that prices have been rising pretty steadily for the last, say, three quarters of a year or so. And in addition to consumer prices, producer price inflation, which is the inflation that feeds into the manufacturing process and then spills into consumer prices, is also running hot. That means consumer prices will likely remain elevated, at least for the intermediate term, as these production costs make their way through the system. Uh, this next chart uh, shows the breakdown of CPI components and where most of the pain is showing up. You can see that the prices are rising on everything from energy to food to housing, costing the average American family about $325 a month. Now, if there's a silver lining in this dark cloud, it's that some of the categories, like used cars, that's the one with the second biggest gain there, actually saw a bit of a reversal uh, in the most recent reporting period. And this is leading some analysts to conclude that maybe the growth rate of inflation is topping out. Now, one of the things that I want everybody to know is when it comes to inflation and uh, the financial planning that we do for retirement is that we build inflation assumptions into each retirement plan we design. So when inflation does surface, you're prepared. And I want to remind everybody that a little bit of inflation is actually good. In fact, in the U.S., our Federal Reserve targets an inflation goal of about 2%. But as you can imagine, when inflation gets too high and it gets out of hand as it is now, it can cause big financial problems for the economy. So to avoid bad outcomes, the Federal Reserve, as the official guardian of the economy, is charged with putting inflation back in the bottle. Uh, this can be hard to do, though, because inflation can create a dangerous mindset. This happens when workers and companies see prices going up and they react by demanding higher wages or higher prices for their products. Suddenly, inflation becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy and kind of like a wildfire continues to, uh, to, to spread pretty quickly. And these cycles can be tough to stop. So the Fed may be forced to inflict some financial pain on investors to accomplish their goal of taming inflation. This is one of the important points I wanted to make, is this is something to be prepared for. The Fed essentially tamps down on the wealth effect by deflating the stock market. And if people aren't feeling as wealthy, they tend not to spend as much. And now we're starting to reverse that problem of too much money chasing too few goods because it's another way of draining money from the system. The Fed's current belief is that they can bring inflation under control later this year through policy adjustments, which generally involve adjusting interest rates and money supply, while at the same time market forces should be able to sort out the supply and demand imbalances. Now, I would tell you how all this is going to work itself out, but unfortunately, and longtime clients understand my problem here, my crystal ball is in the shop waiting for parts. I can only assume this involves more supply chain issues. I don't know for sure. Anyway, uh, history is not on the Fed's side here. Uh, being able to engineer a soft landing is difficult and typically is not something they successfully pull off. 
But hey, there is a first time for everything, right? We have our doubts, and that is evidenced by the fact that we have a um, defensive posture that we're starting to build into our tactical advance and defend portfolios. That's it for today. Um, let us know if you have any questions, and thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.